Surprise! <laughs> uh, you got that surprise look on your face. You look extremely happy and, and gratified that you've been shocked by an impromptu spontaneous party at your expense because of your of your birthday. Hey guys, Tommy with Studio Sense here. I don't know about you, but not all surprises are good, but there are some really good surprises. And when it comes to fragrance, have you ever purchased something that you expected to be meh or mediocre and you were just really surprised at the quality of the fragrance or the aromatic nature of the fragrance or even the price? Well, today we're going to be talking about seven fragrances that really surprised me just how how excellent they were when I wasn't expecting something of that quality. So when we come back, we're going to go over those seven fragrances. That and more is coming your way, so stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone. So not all surprises are welcome, but definitely the ones we're going to be talking about here in just a moment are very welcome because I'm talking about fragrances that whether through experience or just some assumptions that you made or maybe you heard a rumor about the fragrance, fragrances that you expected to be really bad or just mediocre, when you finally did experience them, you were shocked and surprised at how they exceeded your expectations. So I've got seven of these fragrances that that was my reaction to, so we're gonna take a look at all of them. The very first fragrance I'm featuring that I expected to be kind of uh, mediocre, that I was really surprised at just how good it is, is actually a Paco Rabanne fragrance from the Invictus line of fragrances. It is Invictus Intense. Do you recall when you first tried Invictus and you were like, wow, I really like that, or wow, I don't really like that. Whatever your reaction was, it kind of, as time went on and flankers were released, it kind of created this expectation that the flankers would be very similar and similar in quality. Invictus Intense really surprised me at how different it was and overall in the line. Now it does carry the Invictus DNA, that, that sweet, slightly bubblegum, youthful DNA. It's got a bit more woods and it's got a little bit of malt in there. So it has a little bit of a kind of a barley, lightly boozy side to it. And it's a bit denser, deeper, and darker than a lot of Invictus fragrances. It also has a bit of amber, ambergris, or ambroxan, and black pepper. I'm actually wearing Invictus Intense today, and it's been a hot summer day. Fantastic fragrance for warmer days. And it also can be worn in cooler days of summer and spring and fall. It's just a really well-rounded Invictus fragrance. I believe overall, even if you're not a fan of the Invictus DNA, I think you would really enjoy Invictus Intense by Paco Rabanne. The next fragrance that kind of surprised me at how good it was, and I really didn't have any expectations of this, it shouldn't have been a surprise though, simply because the other fragrances in this line are all really good in and of themselves. It's a Roberto Cavalli fragrance in the Womo line of fragrances, and it's actually Womo Silver Essence. Silver Essence is a powerhouse of a masculine fragrance. Not only is it a kind of a date night fragrance, it has that lightly seductive overtone to it, but it also has kind of a, a masculine charismatic kind of flair to it that a lot of fragrances lack. It's got an excellent blend of cardamom, ginger, violet leaf, iris, so violet iris combo there, and the heart is great. But it also has geranium, vetiver, tonka bean, and oak moss. Oak moss doesn't appear in a lot of modern men's fragrances, but this one actually manages to smell modern, and it doesn't smell dated, but it adds a bit of retro style or flair to the fragrance. This one is getting harder to find as well as the others in the line, so I went ahead and linked you if you're interested that you can check it out. Roberto Cavalli's Womo Silver Essence. Next up is a fragrance that by now is a classic fragrance by Givenchy. Many people love this fragrance and to this day it is one of their best sold fragrances. I wasn't super stoked about it but when I got it and tried it Givenchy Pie really surprised me at just how good and smooth of a fragrance this is. This fragrance has enough edible notes in it that you could almost call it a gourmand fragrance. It's got brown sugar, it's got cinnamon, a ton of really smooth, creamy, very welcoming and inviting notes, but it also has a little bit of a barbershop side to it without going all the way in that direction. So it's not full barbershop. It opens with mandarin, basil, mint, rosemary, wild tarragon. It's got geranium, lily, orange blossom, aniseed. It's got a little bit of licorice in the heart, almond, tonka, vanilla, brown sugar, and cedarwood in the base. Ton of notes. I noticed a comment from zoologist Victor Wong on Facebook he was somewhere where the person across from him was wearing this, 
but they didn't know what it was. They just drew the pie symbol and said, it's from Givenchy and this is what it is. And he was like, oh, Givenchy pie. And he said it smelled beautiful on them. They wore it very well. And this does wear extremely well, even to this day, and isn't doesn't smell dated. If you haven't tried out Givenchy pie yet, it's quite the surprise in a bottle. Next up is a lovely summertime fragrance that just didn't have a marketing push behind it. Therefore, not a ton of people are aware of just how good this fragrance is, with the exception of YouTube reviewers like myself letting you know. It is a fragrance from the house of Missoni. It is Missoni Wave. This one, similar to Womo Silver Essence, also has oak moss in it, but also has a good bit of Egyptian Pelargonium. It's got Clary Sage, Lavender, there's Haitian Vetiver, there's Vanilla Orchid, and of course it's an aquatic fragrance, so there's plenty of marine notes in here as well. This one smells a bit like Chanel's Alorom Sport. If you've ever tried that fragrance, it's extremely popular. This one is extremely refreshing, perfect for the summertime. Right now is the time to bust this one out, or if you haven't tried it, in my estimation, you could blind buy it without a second thought because it's really that good. Missoni Wave by Missoni. Another fragrance that surprised me that by now many people really enjoy is a Rochas fragrance. It is Mustache Eau de Parfum, the Eau de Parfum version. Now there's an Eau de Toilette version of this that is very, very different. That's not what we're talking about. The Eau de Parfum version smells a bit like Yves Saint Laurent's Tuxedo, the very popular tuxedo fragrance, very expensive. This is very inexpensive. Well, not quite as inexpensive as it was. I did want to let you guys know, for those of you that know that this is a great fragrance, that have tried it and are looking for it and have not had a lot of luck, or you've seen a lot of overpriced posts on eBay or Amazon, right now you can actually get this, a tester of this, in the 125 ml bottle at Fragrance X. And I've also linked that below for those of you that just want to go straight away and purchase your tester. I think it's like 67. It's a bit more than when it first came out, but that's because it's really hard to find right now. So I don't know how many testers they have, but they're probably going to run out very quickly. So again, if you would like to get your Mustache Eau de Parfum tester, Go ahead and click on that link for Fragrance X. Mandarin orange, pink pepper, rose, cedar wood, patchouli, benzoin, sweet, warm. It is an epic fragrance, a very masculine fragrance, and very woody in the background. I really like the woodsy backbone of, of this. And again, if you smelled tuxedo, it smells very similar to that for a modicum of the price. Mustache Eau de Parfum by Rochas. The next fragrance that really surprised me is a recent release. It came out in 2021 from a house that doesn't release a ton of bangers, but this is an absolute banger in my estimation, and that's why it's really hard to find right now. It is from Salvatore Ferragamo, Spicy Leather. And I just about dropped a fragrance. Spicy Leather is it's not only a great leather-based fragrance, but when it dries down, it becomes something a bit more complex. It's extremely hyper-versatile. Typically, leather is going to be one of those fragrances. It's something you want to wear more in cooler weather, but this one you can wear in warm weather as well. You've got saffron, bergamot, lemon, black pepper, nutmeg, clary sage, cedar. Of course, in the base is where you get the leather, along with patchouli, sandalwood, and tonka bean for sweetness and creaminess. Honestly, guys, one of the best scents to come out of 2021. It was the best kept secret in my rotation, but now you know. Good luck in finding it though. It wasn't released in North America yet. It is on some gray sites. Just keep checking back and I will link it as soon as I can find more of it. That is Salvatore Ferragamo's Spicy Leather. The last fragrance I want to bring to your attention that really surprised me at just how good it is, is a Chopard fragrance. I didn't really have any expectations of it, but it is Chopard Black Incense Malachi. This is a beautiful, dark, dry, elegant, incense-based fragrance and should be lauded for how well it performs. The primary player in this is Somalian frankincense. Then it's got a little bit of oud to add some body to that, that dense weight, a little bit of leather, and some various spices. But you know what, guys? I've discovered something interesting about Chopard Black Incense Malachi. There's a fragrance by Isimiyaki that is extremely popular, kind of hard to find at times. It is Pulse of the Night. If you would like to bypass getting Pulse of the Night and wear something that smells very similar, all you've got to do is get a hold of Chopard Black Incense Malachi and then the Dolce & Gabbana The One Eau de Parfum version and layer them. So first you want to start out with Black Incense Malachi. Spray about two or three sprays on your arm or your pulse point. Let it dry just a bit and then spray two sprays 
of Dolce & Gabbana The One Eau de Parfum. Once that dries down, you'll be quite surprised, or maybe not surprised at all, at how similar to Pulse of the Night that it smells. Captures that dark richness, but it adds something that Black Malachite doesn't have, and that's a bit of sweetness that's in The One Eau de Parfum, and of course it's got that date night sensibility about it that's just very seductive, very sexy fragrance. Well guys, that's it for my seven fragrances that really surprised me just how good they really are when I had a either a negative expectation or not very much of an expectation at all. If you've tried out these fragrances in a similar way, let me know what your thoughts are of them or you have other fragrances that surprised you at how good they were, let me know those as well. Thanks so much though for stopping by and taking some time out of your day to check out today's video and as always, thank you so much for your support on my channel. I'm Tommy with Studio Sense and I'll see you tomorrow.